The Magic of Life, presented by Michael Gersh, is an incredible, inspirational program. As a victim and survivor of a drunken driving incident that killed his mother and almost himself when he was an infant, Michael combines stand-up comedy, audience participation, and his emotional story that will touch any audience. I need three volunteers to kind of help me out for this little party, sort of like an experiment. Great, We're going to flash forward. This is what well, I'm going to demonstrate what happens on a college campus almost every Wednesday through Sunday, probably. You have to be careful if you make choices in life. These are the consequences of your actions. And to do it on, on your first weekend here is going to make an impact for the rest of your lives. So, Robert, show everyone what happened to you at my party. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Congratulations. You got a. Uh, well, you can be a dad now, too. How about that? It's funny. Here I am talking about being yourself and standing up for yourself, and I'm not even showing my true self to you guys, and I don't think that's fair. <laughs> See, this is who I am. I'm a KISS fan. I've been a KISS fan since the second grade. If you believe in yourself and you believe in something so strongly, you're going to stand up for yourself. And that's the whole message of you know, the whole KISS thing. You know, you have to be your individual, and no one could ever take that away from you. And that's a very important thing when you come into school. You want to please different people. The only person you have to please in life, in life, is yourself, and that's it. So when I was in college, we did, we did something called Dead Day. Now, Dead Day, if you don't know, is we kind of symbolize people dying from drunk driving accidents. And this was actually from 1991 or two, my tombstone that we put up in our cafeteria. So it's just like if we killed off student leaders and we put up fake tombstones down in the hub to symbolize their deaths. Now, what a lot of people didn't know that I went to school with was that this tombstone should have been real. Okay, I was born on July 24th, uh, 1970. On September 19th, 1970, about eight weeks later, uh, my father was driving us back from our grandparents in New York. And my mother was holding me, because back in 1970, there weren't any car seats like there are today. And a drunk driver plowed through the intersection and T-boned our car. And the impact was so great. I flew out of my mother's arms and I was found between the door and the dash of the car and nobody knew where I was for a good 10 minutes because I didn't make any noise. And uh, was it Becky that wants to be a nursing student? Right? You know how many bones in a human body? Maybe nursing's not for you now after all. <laughs> I'm thinking you should help Robert out. I don't know. It's about 206, right? Nearly every bone in my body was broken. My skull was completely fractured. The fact that I am 38 years old and standing here in front of you today is nothing short of a miracle. Okay? Oh, thank you. Thanks. And every day I wake up, that's a good day for me. Like today, right now, this is my greatest day. This is my greatest moment in life. Alcohol never solves anything anyway. That's why there's always more fights and more problems, all that type of stuff. But you have to cherish each moment you're here alive. My mother was 28 years old at the time of the car accident. And my mother did not survive. She was 28 years old. She was a school teacher, mother of two. And it's odd that she was a teacher and somehow I ended up in education as well. Go figure. So now you're looking at a guy, uh, not like a stranger, but almost like you, like a mother's child. And I never knew my mother because of some moron who drove drunk. So the word mom is not in my vocabulary. You know, I never had the chance to run home from school, hey, mom, you know, put that on the fridge, or hey, mom, what's for dinner, or hey, mom, I love you. I do these things because someone has to stand up for those people that can't, whether it's my mom or the other victims and survivors of drunk driving accidents. Last year alone, 17,000 people died in drunk driving accidents, and in this country, we don't even bat an eye anymore, and that's a problem. Uh, what I'm going to show you is the only footage I have of my mom uh, and myself. <laughs> with you, you're really not here for an alcohol program. I have a lawsuit against my brother. Uh, you saw what he did to me, okay? My worst day ever started around 8.30 in the morning on May 1st, 2004. 
Big John was in a fatal car accident. And here's a guy who's a, my brother, you know, knew me for 15 years, knew my story. So you would think one of my best friends would know better about getting behind a car drunk. Now, if Big John was, you know, standing upright and ran into the tree himself, actually ran, he would have bounced off, laughed, and did it again. But behind the wheel of his truck, not wearing his seatbelt, and drunk, when John hit that tree at 20, 25 miles per hour, he broke his neck. And he died. And if it could happen to one of my best friends, don't sit there for a second and think it can't happen to you or one of your friends as well. If your friends are like your brothers or your sisters, you have to look out for them no matter what. And to call my best friends up and say Big John died was one of the worst feelings in my entire life. It sucks. And I can stand here today and say none of you guys want to do that, especially at your age right now. I am an official card-carrying member of KISS. Yes, I am. Back when you guys weren't born, they actually gave out membership cards and all that cool stuff. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I have action figures and stuff. They're not dolls, they're action figures. <laughs> Speaking from an academic visor point of view real quick, I had a young lady a couple years ago, her first semester, she got a .6 GPA. You need a .5 to get kicked out of here, okay? Second semester, she retook all her classes again, and she was on the dean's list. And I said, Sarah, what was the difference? And she said, well, Michael, I stopped partying and I went to class. You know, life is short and life is very precious. And I want you guys to help me. I want another experiment real quick and we're going to wrap up. I want everyone to hold up two fingers. Okay. Um, put them against your neck and close your eyes. And I want you to feel that pulse. Just close your eyes and feel that thump in there for me. All right, open your eyes. Check your wallet, make sure everything's still there. Because I move quick, people. I am quick. You know what that means right there? That means that's a good day right there. When you can wake up and feel your pulse, that's a great day. Thank you very much. Have a great first semester, guys. See ya. Bye.